What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon round two of the Six Nations 2024 just around the corner. Team announcements have started happening, which means we get to do more preview videos. This one is going to be for England versus Wales. They're the first two teams to have theirs out. We're still waiting for Scotland at the time of filming this. So this is game two of the weekend, but we're doing the uh, as the as the first video. So we're going to have a run through of the teams that have been announced going into this game. Who we think some good picks and bad picks. Go over our expectations and thoughts on how we think this game might go. And then finally, of course, giving a score prediction at the end of it. I got three from three last weekend. Not particularly great on the score prediction, but I got the prediction of the winners right. So hey, I'll take that one as a, as a bit of a win. If you enjoy this style of video, make sure you hit the old like button and uh, subscribe to the channel because we'll be doing the rest of the games over the rest of the Six Nations, doing all these sorts of preview videos. So let's jump into it with, uh, with the home team, England. England last week played Italy. Uh, now, I caught this game sort of back to front. I caught the second half first. I had to go back and rewatch the, uh, the first half. But Italy going into the lead at half time and looking dangerous. They were looking dangerous. But uh, England sorted themselves out in that second half, a much more professional second half. from then a couple of those boys coming on from the bench made a bit of a difference in that team. And they were able to cement out the game. And it just looked like a different England team in that second half. They really took control of the game. And I actually think they'll be quite annoyed to have conceded that last try from Ioane right at the end of the game because that scoreline could have looked very good. In the end, losing bonus point for Italy and, uh, and and look good doing it too. So England have got things to work on. Um, I think we knew this was going to be sort of the thing coming into the, the tournament for both them and Wales, right? They're on the rebuild, some new players coming in. Now, in terms of the team uh, to, to talk about going into this week, not anything to talk about in terms of team changes. As far as I'm aware, I think it's a completely unchanged team. So we'll have a run through and go over some uh, some sort of thoughts on it. Starting out then with the old forwards in the front row, Joe Marler, Jamie George and Will Stewart. Lock department, Maro Atoje and Ollie Chesham. And then in that back row, Roots, Underhill and Ben Earl. Now, the forward pack last week um, had their work cut out for them because the, the Italian team was just wanting to go through those backs. We saw them scoring tries out on the wing. They had a lot of running around the park to do. But in terms of their, their upfront sort of game, they were able to hold on pretty well. The Wales team that I expected to crumble in terms of the, the forward pack actually kind of held up okay against Scotland. I look at some of the stats and they actually seem to do okay. Even though I watched the game live, I was at the stadium for the Wales-Scotland game. Um, and they looked a little bit shaky too, but the stats seem to actually say they were okay across the game. Um, England will want to take that that forward pack in and, and really try and dominate up front. The the scrummaging area I still think is an area that can be targeted against Wales. Joe Marler, Jamie George, Will Stewart. I think that's probably the, the best sort of scrummaging front row they'll be able to have going up against Wales. Being able to take penalties from, from Wales at the set piece, I think, is going to be quite an area of, of, of contention in this game. So I think that's probably right to stick with the same front row. Just get that bit of team cohesion on the go. Someone that I think could have started in this team, though. Cunningham South came on in that game against Italy and and had a bit of a spark about him looked like he was he was up for the hard work now roots was doing very well so i guess he he'd, he'd want to stay on i can't remember who cunningham himself actually came on for if he came on for underhill or, or roots because i think cunningham himself came on at 8 and ben Earl moved to moved to 7 right when he came on um so i'm not sure you know who people would want him to replace i thought cunningham himself could have looked to have actually got a start in this game um the lock department maro toje and ollie chesham i think is still the right move maro toje had one of the better games I've seen him play in, in a long time for me in, a, in an international jersey. I, I've sort of been wavering off of thinking of Maro Toje as maybe being that starting lock for, for England, even though he always will be, right? He's, he's absolutely cemented that position. But I've sort of been a little bit shaky on it. I actually thought the performance against Italy, I thought he actually was was all over the park and looked really, really involved with the game, which was, was nice to see. Um, the line-out situation for Wales last week, awful. <laughs> It was just terrible. I said it in the preview video. Ryan Elias was throwing. I was like, I, have, I don't have a lot of faith in this. So lock department going to be crucial again in this game. Be able to punish that line out situation. In fact, I would just make Wales work for it. You know, Maro Toje gets in the air very well in terms of the, the, the lock. And Ollie Chasson's a, a big contender as well. If I was England, I would just be loading up at the front and the middle of the line out and making Wales throw to the back and beyond. I would put Wales under the pressure and make them do the, the hardest throws and actually just back yourselves in that in that front and middle pod and really try and, you know, punish Wales with that line out because it wasn't looking too good last week. In the halfback partnership, Alex Mitchell and George Ford go back in for this one. Um, Alex Mitchell got himself a try last week, even though I did think it looked a little bit to me like he uh, he didn't release the ball after being tackled. But hey, I'm not an international referee and he was in my fantasy team. So you know what? Let it, let it stand. Uh, but did get his try. Nice to see from him. George Ford staying at 10. Still got no Marcus Smith. Finn Smith, again, I'm not sure. 
But I don't know what games this lad's starting. Unfortunately, I think I think at this stage it's looking like George Ford is is starting every game because I would say the two teams you know England would feel the most confident against going into the Six Nations for me would have been Italy and Wales. And it looks like we've got George Ford starting for both of them just to just to have that, that cool head. I, I don't know who Finn Smith would start against. I wouldn't, you know, start him against Ireland. I wouldn't start him against France. I think that's a lot of pressure to put on him. Again, I think this game might have been a good one in Twickenham. Home crowd behind him, backing him. Maybe could have been a good game to have Finn Smith start, but they've gone for George Ford again. In the centre partnership, Dingwall and Henry Slade. And again, Henry Slade seems to be having a, a pretty decent game. Dingwall... Not so much for me. I, I, I don't know. I didn't really see a lot from him in, in that game. Hopefully we'll see a bit more from him this week. Uh, and then in that back three, Elliot Daly, Tommy Freeman and Freddie Stewart. Elliot Daly last week with his yellow card. Tripping a man over. Uh, just, yeah, just did trip him over, didn't he? Um, yeah, got a yellow card for that one. Very, very odd decision. And, you know, of course, England ended up getting punished from that, that yellow card coming in against their team. Um, Tommy Freeman, I thought, played well. Um, doing another way again. Had him in my fantasy. I was keeping a bit of a keen eye out for him to see how he was getting on. I was looking forward to see, you know, how busy he was going to be around the ball and, and didn't stop all game, to be fair. So sticking with the same 15, not a lot to talk about in terms of the uh, the changes, as well as the replacements then. Theo Dan, Alice Genge, and Dan Cole for that replacement front row. Alex Coles and Cunningham South. Danny Kerr, Finn Smith, and Faye Wilboso. Now, could Wilboso have started? Um, maybe, because uh, he came on against that Italy game, and, and his first sort of action of the game was Italy were pinned back in their own 22, and he just hounded and hounded and hounded after whoever had the ball and was able to put them into touch. I thought he had a good good work rate, um, obviously trying to make a bit of a stamp for that one. Could he have started this week against Wales? Maybe it would have been... Slightly unwise to have had both him and Tommy Freeman on at the same time. Maybe two inexperienced wingers going up against Wales. Maybe that's a smart move to have Elliot Daly on. I might have liked to see him start, though. You know, he's he, not playing for Wales. He's playing for England. Put him on. Start in against Wales. Make a bit of a, a stamp down. Maybe a bit too much pressure on the uh, on that, though. Overall, I still think it's a good England team. I think they've they've taken quite a lot away, I would hope, from that game against City, especially that first half. They've got to get off to a, to a strong first start. Now, the the a reaction to this team coming out, I had a quick look at it. I have to go get the graphic and stuff. I saw it very quickly. The comment sections underneath this. England supporters, I have no faith in this team. This is not a good-looking England team. Wales have got this all day long. Uh, wow, a lot of England supporters really not happy with this team. So let me know what you think of it down in the uh, in the comment sections. I think it's still got legs. I might have liked to see Finn Smith start. Um, maybe, maybe I could have seen someone else start rather than Dingwall. To be fair, I didn't really blow me away um, in that centre position. But overall, I think they've probably got some some stepping stones to go. As do Wales. So uh, you know, I'll see after this game how I'm how I'm feeling about a lot of these uh, a lot of these England players. Uh, moving on then to talk about the Wales team. Wales coming in then with seven changes from that team against Scotland, and you'd have to say, yeah, yeah. Seven changes needed. Uh, now, like I said, I got to go to that game. I actually got very late minute invitation to go and see that one. Um, and man, was that an empty first half performance <laughs> versus Scotland. I I had no idea what was going on. I was talking to people around me in the crowd, Scotland and Wales supporters alike. None of us had any idea what Wales were doing. And it's been a long time since I've been able to say that about like, you know, one of these sort of top 10 international teams thought, oh, just empty, just empty. No idea what the what the thought process was. Every time they got the ball back, it was let's kick it to Kyle Stain and let him get down the other end of the pitch. Uh, defense was not on point. Line outs were awful. Um, you know, Ryan Elias is on the bench this week. I think that's a good move. Um, Sam Costello, uh, the, the kicking options that he's had, I don't know if he was instructed that every time he had the ball, he must kick it back to Scotland. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what they were doing. So the second half, though, much, much better. A lot of those lads came on from the bench and changed the game um, and sort of showed off what Wales can do. When they get on the offensive, when they take control of the game, when they keep hold of the ball, uh, they can do something. Um, and a lot of these changes that are happening in this team reflect, I think, the, the players that were going on in that in that first half that were, were seriously underperforming. So we'll start out with the front row. Gareth Thomas, Elliot D and Kieran Azarati. So they uh, they swapped up the props for this week, and I think this is a good move. Uh, Domachowski still hasn't landed this one for me. I, I'm still not settled on, on him. I was surprised he stayed on. Actually took a really big hit early on and had the medical staff looking at him. I was kind of surprised he, he stayed on for that one. Um, Elliot D, though, coming on from the bench changed the set piece for Wales and it needed to be done. 
I, I've said in a number of videos about Ryan Elias how I, I don't really think he's an international standard. I think his lineup is very poor. I've never really seen a superb game from it at, at international. There's been one or two that have been better. And I get comments in every single video that talk about Ryan Elias. He's the best hooker in Wales. Mad Dragon, you've got no idea. Every game I see him in, it's the same result. So I don't know. Elliot D starting, right move for me. You've got to have a strong lineup versus England. If you cannot get that set piece right, England will just punish you. They don't care if it's taking the penalties, taking the drop goals, or just moving up the field. Like, they'll just punish you. You've got to have a solid lineup. Elliot D starting for me is absolutely the right move. And I think changing the props, I think I think probably good to see. A bit of testing to see who's going to be your main start choicing in, in that prop department against an England team in, in the scrum that, I, again, will want to be, you know, competitive there. Lock department, David Jenkins and Adam Beard once again joining up. I've seen a couple of people looking for Will Rowlands to be back in, of course, has now rejoined the team after he had his, his baby. He stayed over in France last week, um, so wasn't able to get down to the game. Is named on the bench down here for this week. But again, just lack of training, time in training with them. I think it's a good move to, to start, you know, both of those boys then have Will Rowlands come on um, later on into that game. In the back row, Alex Mann, Tommy Raffel and Aaron Wainwright too. Man, oh man, Aaron Wainwright had a, had a solid game in that second half. I, I always enjoy seeing Aaron Wainwright's running style. <laughs> it looks like the most uncomfortable running style I've ever seen from, a, from an international elite sports player, but it works. It works for him and good on him. You know, he's got a great bout of pace on him, got over for a try last week um, and, was, and was looking good doing it. Alex Mann, I thought, had a decent game. Again, it's all just talking about that second half because anything in that first half, I just... It just couldn't get anything going. It was just tackles after tackles. But the back row ended up doing really well for anyone who caught the fantasy video uh, we did on, on Monday. The, the Wales back rows were up there. They, you know, all three of them were in like the top six for um, for best back rows of the, of the round. Absolutely wild stuff. So it uh, really came to life in that second half. In the halfback partnership, Thomas Williams and Yon Lloyd were swapping it up and good move. Yeah, Gareth Davis for me was not really getting anywhere in that game. Costello, as I kind of said last week, he hasn't landed that international shirt for me. Didn't do a lot uh, in the in the game. Ewan Lloyd came on, has a spark about him. He didn't get everything right. Didn't get everything right, and I'm not expecting him to get everything right. He's still low on caps. I'm expecting things to go wrong. Missed the one kick. Had it got over? Yeah, hey, you know, Wales win that game in that in a ridiculous comeback that they probably, you know, shouldn't have any been anywhere near getting close to. Um, but Ewan Lloyd came on changing the way Wales are playing looks so much more aggressive. This is the guy for me that I want to be seeing starting that 10. I look forward to see how he gets on in this game. In the centre partnership, Nick Tompkins comes in alongside of George North returning in that uh, in that 13 shirt. No uh, Owen Watkins at all in the team. Um, I actually don't know if he picked up an injury or anything. I haven't caught up on, uh, on any of that. And then in the back three, Rio Dyer, Josh Adams and Cam Winnett. I mean, uh, Josh Adams is probably one of the big talking points. I've seen a couple of people Saying, you know, Josh Adams, what what is he doing? We saw him do that little flick of the ball into the into the crowd, giving away a penalty, gave away three. Wales lose by one. You know, gotta cut that sort of stuff out. It doesn't help the team. It didn't slow down Scotland. They were setting up for a line out anyway. They weren't gonna do anything. Uh, you know, silly, silly move. Got to cut that out. I'm sure Gatlin probably will have had words uh, after that and just said, well, you know, what on earth are you doing? Um could they be looking to start someone else? I still think, for me, Josh Adams is the best defensive winger that Wales have, so I, I would be surprised if he, if he got replaced. Um, going up against Elliot Daly is, you know, a, a competition. They've had a lot of experience with each other in the in the past as well. Um, so a lot of changes being made to this Wales team in the starting 15, and I think all of them are positive. I think they're good moves for uh, for Wales. And then in the replacements, Ryan Elias, Domachowski, and Archie Griffin. Not sure. Not sure on this front row. Um, uh, inexperience and underperformance. Um, but bar Archie Griffin, Archie Griffin, me, I, am, I don't know a lot about him. That's just inexperience. We're going to be making his debut, I believe, actually, um, in this game. So we'll see how that one gets on. Uh, rest of the placement forwards, Will Rollins, Tane Basham, and... Oh, sorry, that's it. I, I thought, for some reason, I thought it was a 6-2. There is not. Kieran Hardy, Kai Evans, and Mason Grady are your replacement back. So 5-3. Uh, Why did I think there was a 6-2? I don't know why I thought that was a thing. Um, so overall, in terms of the teams... Who do we think's got the better team? I actually like this Wales starting team more than I did the, the team that went in last week. I think England had done the right move by maintaining consistency, um, just help build on what they had last week. Out of the two teams last week, England had like an okay first half and then it got a bit better in the second half and they were able to seal out the game. Wales had a terrible first half and then had a brilliant second half. So England are looking more consistent. Wales are looking more extreme. 
who's going to turn up on the day, you know, what do you expect to happen? Now, my expectations for this game, um, I'm hoping Wales take the game to England. I don't think this England team is the one you can sit back against and just let them come like they did against Scotland. I think Wales need to be on the offensive because I think this England team is still just going to take every three opportunity that comes. Penalties will come from this Wales team because they're still chopping and changing. You've got to be the offensive team. You've got to get on that front foot. Set piece wise, um, I'm still, I'm assuming that England would be up for taking on the scrummaging side of things. I look, think they'll be looking for a powerful game, especially in Twickenham, bit of crowd behind them. And the line-out situation, even with Elliot D starting, I'm still leaning more towards England being able to have the more dominant line-out. Um, although we saw, you know, Rutsa steal a couple of line-outs from England last week. So we'll see how that gets on. I think there's some big battle areas in, uh, in this game. It's going to be who turns up off the bus, in all honesty. And I didn't think I would be saying that going into this game. I didn't think I'd be saying that halfway through the Scotland game. I thought Wales are just in, in desperate shape going in for this one. So in terms of a score prediction, what do we think? What do we think for this game? Well, if you'd gone into this game at halftime against Scotland, I would have said England all the way. and I would have said comfortably. Wales bounced back in that second half and I think showed what this team can do. I think England will just be able to have their game together a little bit more. If Wales turn up and play in that second half for the full game, I, I think Wales are actually in with a shot of, of being able to take this one. I'm still leaning towards England. Um, I was going to say England by a bit of a high score, but at the end of that Wales game, I'm actually I'm, I'm decreasing that a little bit. I'm going to say England to win this one by six. That is going to be my score predictions, guys. Let me know your score predictions down in the comment section. Make sure you're locking in your fantasy teams now because they'll all be coming out over the next couple of days and what have you. I hope you've all enjoyed this one today, guys. Make sure you stay tuned around the channel for whenever the, uh, the Scotland team gets announced today because uh, then we'll be doing the Scotland and France preview video as well. I'll see you all next time, guys. Bye-bye.